Good morning, church. Welcome you today. Our call to worship is from Psalm 65. Verse 4 says, Blessed are those you choose and bring near to live in your courts. We are filled with the good things of your house, of your holy temple. The whole earth is filled with awe at your wonders, where morning dawns, where evening fades. You call forth songs of praise. God has called songs of praise to come forth from us this morning, and uh, I'm glad to oblige, and I trust you are as well. Let's stand together. We'll open in a word of prayer today. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the promised blessing for those who choose to come into your courts, to be in your house. You promise to fill them with good things. And so, Lord, let the whole earth be filled with awe at your wonders. Lord, as we lift up our songs of joy and praise this morning, Lord, I pray that we would know your tangible spirit in this place this morning. So, Lord, give us a supernatural time in your presence with your people, with your family today. Lord, for those here and those listening online, we ask it in the powerful name of Jesus today. And all God's people said, Amen. Let's remain standing as we worship. Amen. Praise is rising. Eyes are turning to you. Turn to you. Hope is stirring. Hearts are yearning for you. We long for you. When we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us, worthy of all our praises. Hosanna, Hosanna. Welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Hear the sound of hearts returning to you. We turn to you. In your kingdom, broken lives are made new. You make us new. Cause when we see you, we find strength to face the day. In your presence, all our fears are washed away, washed away. Hosanna, Hosanna, you are the God who saves us. Worthy of all our praises, Hosanna, Hosanna, come out your way among us, we welcome you here, Lord Jesus, come out your way among us, we welcome you here, Lord Jesus, last time, come out your way among us. We welcome you here, Lord Jesus. Amen. Praise you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. Lord, we worship you this morning. There is no God like Jehovah. Hallelujah. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's restless heart. 
You lead us by still waters into mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. So remember your people. Remember your children. Remember your promise, O oh God. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Great is your love and justice, God of Jacob. You use the weak to lead the strong. You lead us in the song of your salvation. Thank you, Jesus. And all your people sing along. Sing it, church. So remember your people. Remember your children. Remember your promise, oh God. Remember. Here we go. Remember your people. Remember your children. Remember your promise, oh God. Sing it, church. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough. Your grace is enough for me. Your grace is enough. Heaven reaches. Heaven reaches out to us. Your grace is enough for me. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. You wrestle with the sinner's restless heart. You lead us by still waters into mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. You lead us last time. You lead us by still waters into mercy. And nothing can keep us apart. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. You may be seated this morning. We're going to share communion together in just a few moments. I just want to share a few uh, thoughts with you this morning before we do. Some years ago, a newspaper carried a, an article with a headline, and it said, Crosses make big fashion statement. And it noted crosses are, are dangling from the necks of celebrities and models in party pictures of in all kinds of events, formal and casual, and, and the bigger the cross, the better it seemed. Uh, one jewelry designer said, crosses have been part of my repertoire from the get-go. I've always loved crosses because I think they must make such a big fashion statement. Consider what the world has done with the cross over the years. When we hear of someone uh, desecrating a religious object, we typically think that they have have soiled it or, or damaged it in some way. But the world has possibly desecrated the cross by printing it up, making it a, a attractive and, and trendy, but usually Christless and, and bloodless. In Jesus' day, the cross was anything but a fashion statement. The, the last thing one would do was uh, wear a cross as a piece of jewelry. The cross represented the worst, most agonizing form of death that one could experience. Crucifixion was reserved for the, the worst of criminals. The most shocking thing people heard Jesus say could possibly have been, take up your cross and follow me. When Paul spoke of Christ crucified, he said it was a, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. 
And so here at communion, we remember what the cross really means and the, the timeless message that it communicates. The cross is a, a passion statement rather than a fashion statement. It continues to declare the, the passionate love of our Heavenly Father for sinners and for Jesus' passionate willingness to die there so that we could be forgiven. When Mel Gibson's movie, The Passion of the Christ, was released in 2004, it was rated R. It was restricted to anyone under 17. They needed to be accompanied by an adult. And this was because of the amount of, of bloodshed and violence that was displayed in the film. Not only at the crucifixion, but by the Roman soldiers' extremely brutal flogging of Jesus. Crucifixion was repulsive. It was disgusting. But so is sin in the sight of a holy God. And this is why highlighting the cross as a, a passion, not a fashion statement, is so important. The cross truly does deserve to be rated R. R for redemption and R for rejoicing that Jesus paid the ransom to set us free from our bondage uh, of sin. And he rose from the grave victorious over death. So let's remember what Christ did on the cross for us as we receive the emblems this morning. We'll take them together after we've all received them. He became sin Who knew no sin That we might become His righteousness He humbled Himself carried the cross love so amazing love so amazing Jesus Messiah name above all names Blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah. Lord of all His body the bread His blood the wine Broken and poured out All for love The whole earth trembled And the veil was torn Love so amazing, love so amazing. Sing it, church, Jesus Messiah, Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel. Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom from heaven, Jesus Messiah, Lord of all. Let's sing the chorus one more time, church. Ready? Sing it to Jesus, Jesus Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners. 
for the ransom from heaven Jesus Messiah Lord of all Precious Jesus Hallelujah Thank you Jesus Hallelujah Wonderful Savior Glorious Lord Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Apostle Paul said, For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he'd given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Let's eat together. The apostle went on to say, in the same way after supper, Christ took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let's drink together. Heavenly Father, we thank you for Jesus, our Messiah, our Savior. We thank you for the ransom from heaven that paid our sins. What a ransom that was owed to you and you provided it for us. That is love that is amazing. So Lord, we thank you now that all of our hope is in you. All of our hope for sins forgiven, all of our hope for eternal life, all of our hope that we are redeemed and changed and transformed. Lord, we thank you for the difference that the cross makes, Jesus, because of your wonderful sacrifice and because your blood that was shed. We thank you that everything changes because of Calvary. We bless your name, Jesus, Savior and Lord, and soon coming King. And once more, we say thank you. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for your sacrifice. Thank you for life anew that you have provided for us. We love you and bless your holy name. Amen. Let's continue to worship our Savior this morning. Praise you, Lord, Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Praise you, Lord. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare, you're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. I've tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves. Where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone. Your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, 
There's nothing worth more. There's nothing worth more that will ever come close. No thing can compare. You're our living hope. Your presence, Lord. tasted and seen of the sweetest of loves where my heart becomes free and my shame is undone your presence Lord sing it church Holy Spirit you are welcome Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Holy Spirit, you are welcome here. Come flood this place and fill the atmosphere. Your glory, God, is what our hearts long for. To be overcome by your presence, Lord. Your presence, Lord. Let us become, let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. Let us become more aware of your presence. Let us experience the glory of your goodness. and fill the atmosphere your glory God is what our hearts long for to be overcome by your presence Lord Holy Spirit you are welcome here come flood this place and fill the atmosphere your glory, God, is what our hearts long for, to be overcome by your presence, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Thank you, Lord, for your presence. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord, for your presence in this place. You're worthy of all praise. Jesus, you are the real deal. Your blood cleanses us from all unrighteousness. You made a way for us to be close. To come into your presence boldly before the throne of grace because of the blood of the lamb we can draw near so lord this morning in the name of jesus we come boldly to your throne and we ask lord in jesus name that you would transform this world around us we ask lord god that you transform Everything about us, Lord God, in Jesus' name. 
if there be anything in our lives, Lord God, that would make you sad, that would hurt your heart. We pray in Jesus' name, not only that you would convict us of it, Lord, but you, Lord, would draw us to yourself and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name, if there be anything, Lord God, as we come before your altar this morning, and we know that we've done wrong to our brothers or our sisters, we pray, Lord, in Jesus' name, that you would right the situations in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord God, that you would restore relationships, that you would make them holy before you. Lord, we pray in Jesus' name against fear and doubt and the lies of the evil one, Lord, that we have believed. And we ask, Lord God, that the truth of your word would penetrate our hearts, that we would know that you are the real deal, that you would never leave us nor forsake us, that in Christ we are new creations, the old is gone, the new has come. Jesus, have your way in this place. Release. In Jesus' name. Release, Lord God. Bring healing in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Shush. Praise you, Jesus. I believe you are the Christ, the son of the living God. You are the Christ, the son of the living God, Jesus. Jesus. Should Jesus. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin? Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Sing it, church. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Verse 2. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes, a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Come to the altar, the Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Some of you might think this morning, this sounds like a song that you sing when you first come to Jesus, but it's not. He desires that you come every day, that you fellowship with him, 
that you talk to him. He longs for your for relationship with you. That you would just draw near to him. That's why communion, we do it monthly for a reason. The fundamentals, church. The blood of Jesus Christ cleanses us from all sin. That's the good news. You are free because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And he has come to make a home inside of you. He wants to live inside of you. Let's sing it. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus. Last time. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory be to our Savior. Hallelujah. Ask to get your Bibles out this morning. Let's hear what the Spirit would say to the church today. Ready for a pledge? Let's lift them high and say together, This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. Today I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess, my mind is alert, my heart is receptive. I will never be the same. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I will never be the same, never, never, never. I will never be the same, in Jesus' name, amen. Just a reminder that the offering plates are at the back. You can give that way this morning. Or you can also give by email, email transfer at evangelchurch at bellnet.ca. Another quick announcement. Uh, Bible study is starting up September 20th, 7 p.m. And we're going to be joining together with our friends from St. Andrews. We'll be meeting at the St. Andrews Church. And uh, our topic is prayer. Does it make a difference? So six week study and we want you to be a part of that. So mark that on your calendars. So that's not this Wednesday, but next Wednesday. This morning I want to speak on the topic of skip the shortcuts. Have you ever taken a shortcut that wasn't, right? Sure we all have. Uh, I remember one time in, in Bible college, um, I lived in a, a residence that was just off of campus. And um, I had stepped out on a wintry morning, and uh, one of the other gentlemen in our residence, he had, uh, he had a vehicle. And he says, come on, Rob, we'll give you a ride. He says, I'm going to show you the burly shortcut. And uh, so I hop in his car. There's, it's missing one wiper. He had a, actually had a sock wrapped around the handle so it wouldn't scra scratch his windshield. And he, he drives down the street, he turns in between two buildings, like it was not a road, in between two buildings. He, he cut across the sidewalk and through the parking lot of a corner store to get us onto the next street and head us towards school. We made it safe, but I didn't drive with him again after that. <laughs> <laughs> Tell you a story of a couple of the shortcuts. Uh, Rosie Ruiz, she took a shortcut in April of 1980 Rosie was the first woman to cross the finish line of the 1980 Boston Marathon, a really remarkable accomplishment considering uh, that the 26-year-old had only been training for 18 months. She finished in near record time uh, and barely seemed to have broken a sweat. 
Her time was just over two and a half hours, and it was impressive. Even more impressive, it, it seemed like her, her hair was perfect. It, it didn't take long for people to start asking questions. No one remembered seeing her for the first 25 miles of the course. And some witnesses said they watched her run onto the course from the sidelines about a mile from the finish line. Later, it was revealed that she had also cheated in the New York Marathon. She finished 24th in that one, and she did it by, wait for it, taking the subway. <laughs> and so, so Rosie Shortcut will always leave the word cheater attached to her legacy. Uh, in another story, 19-year-old uh, Jean Hilliard, she took a shortcut, and this one was where, near Langby, Minnesota. It was cold, the road was icy on the shortcut, and her car slid into a ditch. And she decided to walk to the nearby home of a friend and get help. But it was a couple miles away, and she barely made it. She, she collapsed before she could knock on the door. Her friend found her six hours later with her eyes frozen open. He tried to put her in the cab of his truck, but she was too stiff. So he had to take her to the hospital in a friend's car. She was so frozen, in fact, that the IV needle broke when they tried to put it into her arm. Doctors didn't give up on her, though. They slowly warmed her body, and within hours, she woke up. Jean's shortcut was nearly a deadly one. Today, I want to look at an Old Testament patriarch who was also a bit of a cheater. He tried to take shortcuts. His name was Jacob. So let's read about uh, an encounter he had with his brother Esau. This is found in Genesis chapter 25. We'll start at verse 29. One day when Jacob was cooking some stew, Esau arrived home from the wilderness exhausted and hungry. Esau said to Jacob, I'm starved. Give me some of that red stew. This is how Esau got his other name, Edom, which means red. All right, Jacob replied, but trade me your rights as the firstborn son. Look, I'm dying of starvation, said Esau. What good is my birthright to me now? But Jacob said, first you must swear that your birthright is mine. So Esau swore an oath thereby selling all his rights as the firstborn to his brother Jacob. Then Jacob gave Esau some bread and lentil stew. Esau ate the meal, then he got up and left. He showed contempt for his rights as the firstborn. So, Esau comes home from hunting. He has an empty belly. And he smelled a pot of red beans that Jacob was, was stirring over an open fire. The fragrance of simmering onions and garlic and marbled beef made his mouth water. Give me a spoon, Jacob, Esau demanded. Jacob sensed his opportunity. What's it worth to you, bro? Anything. I'm starving to death. Anything? Name your price. Do you want my bow? Do you want my arrow? How about my new knife? It's yours for a bowl of stew. And Jacob had something greater in mind. I want the birthright. It was a big ask. So Esau weighed his options. And after a brief thought or two, he sealed his destiny with these words. What good is a birthright if I'm dead? Esau... I highly doubt would have died. He was in no more danger than the teenager who exaggerates, I'm starving to death. You just ate two hours ago, you'll be fine, right? Uh, Esau was a hunter. He was more than able to provide for himself. He was a big brawny brute who probably uh, could have taken the soup from his brother if he so desired. Instead, Esau shrugged off his rights as the firstborn. He treated his birthright as if it was of no value to him. As the firstborn, he was entitled to twice what his younger brother would have received upon their father's death. The blessing God gave to Abraham would have also been passed down to his father Isaac. That would also be his, but he traded it all for a bowl 
of soup. Esau let Jacob have it all. Years later, uh, Jacob would be called Israel, and he would become the father of 12 tribes. One of his sons, Judah, fathered a, a lineage that gave birth to the Lion of Judah, Jesus Christ. Instead, Esau was left with a bowl of beans. Esau took a shortcut that cost him. At times, all of us have chosen a quick and easy route. Sin often comes disguised as an easy shortcut, but in the end, it will cost us more than we ever imagined. At its root, sin is the unwillingness to wait, to trust, and to follow God's plan. It's taking matters into our own hands. But that's also what Jacob did. It was not God's intention that he get the, the birthright through scheming and deception. God had promised Jacob's mom, Rebekah, Genesis 25, 23 says, the, the sons in your womb will become two nations. Remember, they were twins. From the very beginning, the two nations will be rivals. One nation will be stronger than the other, and your older son will serve the younger son. I believe Jacob must have known this as well. Uh, God's plan did not need Jacob's nudge. He refused to wait for God to act in his time. He should have waited, but instead, Rebekah and Jacob took a shortcut. Jump ahead to Genesis 27. Here we see the elderly Isaac. He, he wanted to be sure to, to pass along the family blessing before his years came to an end. It turned out it was a bit premature because he would live another 45 years. Uh, here is what uh, is recorded for us. It says, one day when Isaac was old and turning blind, he called for Esau, his older son, and he said, my son? Yes, father, Esau replied. I am an old man now, Isaac said, and, and I don't know when I may die. Take your bow and your quiver full of arrows and go out into the open country to hunt some wild game for me. Prepare my favorite dish and bring it here for me to eat. Then I will pronounce the blessing that belongs to you, my firstborn son, before I die. So Rebecca overheard the instructions of Isaac, and immediately she goes to her son, Jacob. Uh, he was mom's favorite. Esau was dad's favorite. And so she instructed him to, to cook up a, a hearty meal and to take it to his father, Isaac. And Jacob resisted. Even his aging father, who was turning blind, could tell the difference between these two sons. But Rebecca insisted, and she promised to take any blame if this plan failed. And so while Esau hunted, Rebecca and Jacob, they, they cooked the lamb and they grabbed a goat skin. And, and Jacob pulled it over his shoulders and he entered his father's tent. And, and Jacob probably altered his voice as best he could to sound husky like his brothers. Um, and he insisted that he was Esau. And he offered his father the food and requested the blessing. Isaac fell for it and he pronounced the blessing upon Jacob. Verse 29. May many nations become your servants, and may they bow down to you. May you be the master over your brothers, and may your mother's sons bow down to you. All who curse you will be cursed, and all who bless you will be blessed. And so Isaac unknowingly crowned the wrong son. He would soon learn what had happened when Esau returned. Drop down to verse 33. Uh, it records uh, the reactions. It says, Isaac began to tremble uncontrollably and said, Then who just served me wild game? I have already eaten it, and I blessed him just before you came. And yes, that blessing must stand. When Esau heard his father's words, he let out a loud and bitter cry. Oh, my father, what about me? Bless me too, he begged. But Isaac said, Your brother was here. And he tricked me. He has taken away your blessing. Drop down to verse 38. Esau pleaded, But do you have only one blessing? Oh, my father, bless me too. Then Esau broke down and he wept. This seems strange to us. Why not just haul Jacob back in 
and have Isaac unbless him and bless Esau, <laughs> right? But things just didn't work like that. A, a blessing had this built-in binding element. It was irreversible. It was irrevocable. And so Isaac could give Esau a secondary inheritance, but really nothing more. We have to wonder why God let this play out. Jacob and Rebekah ha had crossed a line. However, he let everything unfold complete with the consequences. Don't miss the grace of God in this story. This family is far from perfect. The brothers are at odds. The parents play favorites. The, the dysfunction is obvious. Yet God chose to work through them. And doesn't that give you hope for your situation? Amen. We break promises, yet God forgives. We neglect our commitments, yet God is faithful. We, we turn our backs on Him, and yet he, he turns towards us, and He calls us back to Himself. And that's not to say that our shortcuts have no consequences. The relationship between Esau and Jacob was, was almost forever destroyed. Genesis 27, 41 records from that time on, Esau hated Jacob because their father had given Jacob the blessing. And Esau began to scheme. I will soon be mourning my father's death. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. Fortunately for Jacob, Rebekah caught wind of Esau's plans and she sent him away. Jacob and Rebekah got what they wanted, but at what cost? Jacob received the blessing, but his family was splintered. He was now without a home. He had to run for his life. His brother wanted to kill him. He had betrayed his father's trust. And as far as we knew, we know he never saw his mother again. He forfeited all the prosperity he would have received from the birthright. No flocks, no herds or possessions. His life was forever altered because he took a shortcut. All because he couldn't wait. What about us? What shortcuts are we taking in life? God has promised to give us all that we need. Joy and hope and life and love are ours for the asking. All we need to do is wait on God and, and move when he instructs. But God seems slow to us. His timing is often out of sync with our timing. So, we cut corners. We cheat on assignments in school. We don't declare portions of our income. We deceive others for our own advantage. We, we don't use goat skins and lamb. But we do use lies and exaggerations and half-truths. We, we drop names. We, we work the system. We manipulate others. We take the shortcut of justification. God wants me to have this job, so I'll just pad my resume. God wants me to be happy, so I'll pursue a relationship outside of my marriage. I know God wants me to, to tell the truth, but by telling the truth, it's going to get me in trouble. A little lie is certainly appropriate. How many shortcuts have we justified with the best of intentions. A wrong shortcut, even taken for the right reasons, always causes someone pain. See, most of our issues aren't from our desired ends, but the means we choose to achieve them. Think about that. A few of us get up in the morning and make plans to destroy our lives. Most of us know what we want. We just don't want to do the necessary things to make our goals happen. So we take a shortcut. We cheat. And that's when the trouble begins. See, I'd like to play the keyboard like Pat. I, I love hearing someone play the piano. And, and when I hear someone play the piano, I wish I could play the piano. What I'm not willing to do is practice. I'm not willing to sit at the piano and play the scales, do the fingering exercises, learn to read music. I want to play, I just don't want to do the work. 
I know, you're thinking I'm pretty lazy, right? <laughs> okay. If you want to lose weight, what you don't want to do is count calories and carbs and drink a gallon of water a day and work out, right? You would rather take a pill. Isn't there an easier way to lose weight? Play the piano or do anything else we really want to do? And the short answer is no. There's no shortcut to any place worth going to. One of the great disappointments of life is, is when it finally hits us how much work life requires. Everything takes work. Want to be a good parent is going to take some work. Want a good marriage is going to take work. Want to follow Christ? It's going to take some work. And this disappoints us. To be honest, didn't you think when you became a Christian that, that Jesus would fix everything that was wrong in your life? Me too. I thought once I welcomed Christ into my life that I would be spiritually repaired and I would never have to struggle with the hard things of life again. Surprise! <laughs> Here's what no one tells you. Becoming a Christian is only the beginning of being a Christian. In fact, following Christ is, uh, is the one step that gives us the focus and the strength to begin to deal with all the junk that's in our lives. We'll need all the focus and strength we can get because we have to deal with our junk one piece at a time. And this takes a long time. In fact, it'll take you the rest of your life. There are no shortcuts. We can't cheat the process. There are no shortcuts to character. There are no shortcuts to spiritual growth. Each step of faith depends on the previous step. We must do the next step right, or we won't be able to do the step that's after that one. Cheat on one step, and the whole process comes to a screeching halt. This means we get frustrated, and we get frustrated a lot. We just want to deal with our junk and move on. But we're not given that choice. It's just not that easy. It was never meant to be easy because healing takes time. You can't take a pill. You can't watch a YouTube video. You have to do the work. You can't have salvation without suffering. You can't have Easter without Good Friday. You can't have discipleship without discipline. You can become more like Christ but we have to be willing to do the work in cooperation with the Holy Spirit's leading. If we go back to the original fall and the original sin, remember the punishment was, was work with nothing to show for it. But the resurrection gives us hope that, that our work will pay off with a life transformed into the likeness of Jesus Christ. But we have to be willing to do the work. There are no shortcuts. There are no shortcuts with God. He does not need our foot on the accelerator. He doesn't need our um, help to accomplish his plans, but he does ask for our cooperation. God declared Jacob would get the blessing. Rebecca didn't have to connive. Jacob didn't have to deceive. It was as good as done. What they needed to do was wait on the Lord. So how does that sit with you today? What are you seeking? What are you needing? What are you wanting? What have you been praying for? Let me encourage you to wait on the Lord. His timing is always right. So hold on to those promises He has placed deep within your heart and your spirit. That does not mean we should take on a, a passive attitude and do nothing. Pray and worship and stay in the word and, and go to church and witness to your neighbor and love and serve and give. But don't look for shortcuts. Don't manipulate. Don't deceive. And try and make things happen in your own strength. At the same time, uh, be the employee who does the work. Do, do the student who studies for the test. Be the disciple who obeys. 
God's plan is always best. His plan never destroys people or requires compromise of biblical morals or values. When we do so, we are not in God's will. We may think God is slow to act, but He is not. Trust in Him. Do what you know He is directing you to do, and wait and trust in the Lord. I'll ask the worship team to come back. You know, there is um, one exception to this shortcut thing, and it's salvation. Christ provided us with a shortcut. There was no shortcut for him. He had to go to Calvary's cross, and he had to be crucified. But because of what he did, uh, we, have, we no longer have to make sacrifices of bulls and lambs and goats. We don't have to obey the law to become righteous. But we have to believe upon Jesus Christ with faith in our hearts. And he says, there's the shortcut. There's the narrow way. Take it. Receive salvation that I offer to you. I trust that you have done that in this place this morning. If not, don't look for another way. There is no other way. Receive what Jesus offers you today. If you're listening online, do the same. And say, Jesus, come. Forgive me with your cleansed blood. And help me to live the start of that new life with you and that new walk with you. Heavenly Father, I pray this morning, should there be anyone, Lord, in the church today, anyone listening online, that would say, Jesus, I want to take the road that you have provided through Calvary's cross. I want to receive the salvation of my soul. I want to receive an eternal inheritance in you with, in heaven and the new earth. I want to be a child of God, part of your family. I want your spirit to indwell me. Lord, thank you that you said anyone that comes to you, you will no wise cast out. Lord, anyone can begin a new life with you today because of the way that you have provided. You are the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through you. As you're praying this morning, I want to ask you a couple questions. What are you waiting on? What promise is unfulfilled in your hearts and your life? I want to encourage you to refuse to take any kind of shortcuts that you know are not God's will. Follow the path that God has laid out for you, regardless of how difficult it might seem. And just know that God is faithful. So Lord, I pray for those here today, Lord, many that have been waiting. God, I just don't know when it's going to happen. I don't know when you're going to come through. And I'm tempted to go another way, look a different direction. But Lord, they know in their heart, they know in their spirit that that's the wrong thing to do. So Lord, today, once more, they're saying, I trust you. And I'll walk this road, even though it's hard and difficult at times. And Lord, I pray that you give them encouragement along the way. Lord, I, I pray that your spirit would whisper to them, this is the path, walk in it. Know that the steps of a good man, a good woman are ordered by the Lord and you delight in their way. And Lord, you're going to get us to where we need to be. You're going to do what needs to be done, Lord, to fulfill everything, Lord, that you have promised for our lives. So, Lord, we declare once more that we trust you today. Lord, even when our eyes, Lord, don't see that things are falling into place like we thought they should. Lord, we trust you today. We love you today. Lord, lead us by your spirits. We will be your disciples, your obedient disciples. We pray in Jesus' name today. Amen. Amen. Let's stand together. We'll close with this song. We've seen what you can do.
God of wonders, power has no end. The things you've done before, in greater measure, you will do again. Sing it, church. There's no prison wall you can break through, no mountain you can move. All things are possible. There's no broken body you can't raise, no soul that you can't save. All things are possible. The darkest night, you can light it up. You can light it up. Oh, God of revival, let hope arise, death is overcome, you've already won. Oh, God of revival, verse 2, you rose in victory, now you see it forever on the throne so why should my heart fear what you defeated i will trust in you alone there's no prison there's no prison wall you can't break through no mountain you can move all things are possible there's no broken body you can't raise no soul that you can't save all things are possible the darkest night the darkest night you can light it up you can light it up oh god of revival let hope Death is overcome, you've already won, oh God of revival, God of revival, oh God of revival, come awaken, here we go, come awaken your people, Come awake in this city, God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Every stronghold will crumble, I hear the chains hit the ground. Oh God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Come awake in your people, come awake in the city. God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Every stronghold will crumble. I hear the chains hit the ground. Oh, God of revival, pour it out, pour it out. Because there's no prison while you can't break through. No mountain you can move. All things are possible. There's no broken body you can't raise, no soul that you can't save. All things are possible. Last time, the darkest night. Darkest night, you can light it up. You can light it up. Oh, God of a revival, sing it, church. Let hope arise, death is overcome. You've already won. Oh, God of a revival, God of revival. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. It's our benediction this morning. It's from Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. 
Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do and he will show you which path to take. God bless you as you leave this morning. If you like prayer, feel free to come up afterwards and be glad to pray with you and agree for God's best for your life. Because there's no prison while you can't break through. No mountain you can move. All things are possible. There's no broken body you can't raise. No soul that you can't save. All things are possible. Last time, the darkest night. Darkest night. You can light it up. You can light it up. Oh, God of a revival. Sing it, church. Let hope arise. Death is overcome. You.